Well, here we are, our first episode of our Next Gen podcast here at Kingsway, and we're really excited. Our first guest is Pastor Phil, and so we're going to get to talk with him a little bit today. So, Pastor Phil, you're here with us today. Um, can you give us a little introduction about who you are? And- yeah, sure. Thanks uh, Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it for a while, and it's uh, it's good to be on together. I, um, yeah, I've been at Kingsway for the last uh, almost 11 years, coming up on 11 years, um, prior to the role that I serve in now as lead pastor for almost three years years, about seven and a half years as development pastor, where I was responsible for a bunch of things uh, from growth track to Kingsway Leadership School to development um, across our church and getting people assimilated and on teams and uh, again, serving in the role as lead pastor for the last almost three years. And we're so grateful to have you here. So tell us a little bit about your family. Yeah. So Jen and I have been married coming up on 25 years. It'll be this summer. And uh, we have two kids. Our oldest, Anna, is 19. She's a freshman in college. And our son, Anthony, is 14. He's a freshman in high school. So two freshmen, two different uh, levels of school, of course, but just... uh, yeah, journeying through life and figuring that out day by day, what it looks like to parent a college student and another high school student. So fun, fun season. So now youth ministry has come home and young yeah. adult ministry and all of mm-hmm. that is in your house. How is it How is it different being a parent as opposed to like a ministry leader? Yeah. Um, well, I, I feel like, you know, as a parent, and I know a lot of other parents that we're connected to in groups with, do life with, um, often feel similar to the way Jen and I feel, like, um, is this real? Did this just happen? It feels like they just got here. Um, and at some moments, it feels like a lifetime ago as well. Uh, and then just the fact that you're reminded that God trusts you with children, which mm. is in and of itself somewhat of a miracle, um, yeah. and and really just trying to trying to, to best serve them for what they need. The seasons um, sometimes seem long, but they do roll over quickly, as you know, and mm. as most parents have already figured out wherever they are in the journey. And I think just keeping out in front of you the idea that, you know, God sees you fit to be a parent. That's why he's gifted mm. you with children. Um, so being mindful of that and then really trying to lean into it um, and lean on him for help. Mm. I love what you said about that God has chosen you to be the fit for your family because you know, it's hard. Sometimes we come to be a parent for so many different reasons, like, or, you know, one reason, but, um, you know, at different stages in our life or, you know, expecting it, not expecting it, you know, some inherit family, all of those sorts of things, but God sees you fit. And we even have some, um, you know, grandparents or aunts and uncles or people, you know, ministry leaders, not yet having children, who'll be watching this. So, you know, speaking to that, like the, the heart of the father is for every person to come to a saving faith and, and knowledge of him. And so we're all participate in next gen ministry. Mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned your history here at Kingsway and being, you know, now lead pastor, but the development pastor and coming into that role with really teams and, and then overseeing KLS. But, um, what were, what is your previous ministry experience outside of Kingsway? Yeah, so before we got to Kingsway, um, for 13 years in two churches, we youth pastor, Jen and I did, and um, that was quite the journey. It was a blast. Uh, we started out down just outside of Ocean City. We were there for six years. That was our first stop in full-time ministry, um, so not not far from home where we grew up in Philly, uh, which was great. So we've always been relatively close to family, both of our families, which we're thankful for. Uh, spent six years there, and was young. we were young when we started. I was only 23 at the time. Pastor definitely took a shot on me and uh, made a real, very real and tangible investment in my life. Mm. And then we moved on from there to another church uh, in Lumberton. We were there for uh, seven years, so again, 13 years total. Um, did a lot of things uh, during that time, as, as you know, and as you can imagine, um, being in youth ministry, saw a shift happen, you know, 13 years, I think doing anything is, is, is mm. a stretch, and then... I think sometimes 13 years in youth ministry feels like 30, 30 years in youth <laughs> ministry. Um, and the fact that we got to be at two churches for six and seven years respectively was a big deal. We got to see kids mm. bo- in both places really come through middle school and through high school from our first year through our tenure at both places. Um, and that was that was really helpful to us. I, I hope the kids and parents in those churches can say the same thing. And helpful in that you got to see a maturation process unfold before you and um, really best serve the kids as to what they needed um, as they look mm-hmm. to, to, to follow Jesus with their lives. 
Um, you know, we ride the roller coaster, it's up and down, did all the crazy things you do in youth ministry, uh, <laughs> going home at night, putting your head on the pillow, going, is this making a difference? What just happened? What are we doing? Um, the trips, the missions trips, the camps, the retreats, all the thing mm. that all the things that are, you know, a part of the youth ministry bundle, uh, if you will. And um, enjoy, we enjoyed every minute of it. In both churches, we really had great experiences, um, met so many great people, many of whom mm. we still have, have been lifelong friendships uh, that we've been part of, and uh, so thankful for that. Um, but being able to speak into not just not just students' lives, but the parents that were part of the church. Of course, we had you know in both churches kids that were part of the youth ministry that were either from the community or the neighborhood whose parents never really connected to the church for one reason or another. But then a bunch of church families as well, and being able to think about youth ministry from a holistic standpoint and perspective of like, we want to care for the whole family, because the reality mm. is mom and dad are always disciple number one, even if that's not happening the best at home, um, we're there to come alongside of them and to mm. hold their arms up. And we get them at tops, even if you have a full youth ministry schedule weekly, maybe a couple hours a week um, mm -hmm. from teaching time and hangout time and game time and whatever else is part of the weekly programming. Um, but realizing early on that if we can come alongside parents, build relationships with them, uh, we'll better be able to win the heart and disciple kids for the long haul. Oh, I, I love what you said about partnering with parents because that's really what this podcast mm -hmm. is about. Or, you know, one of our aims in this is, um, you know, we at in Next Gen Ministry, we have them for, like you said, an hour, two hours a week, um, if, if you come every week, you right. know, and yep. I guess including Sunday service or, you know, these other things. Um but parents are there every day, and so we want to come alongside the parents who have the influence and have the opportunity to be able to pour into their lives and ultimately to do the call that God has given them, the role that God has given them to disciple them, their kids. And uh, so for you and Jen, you know, when that role shifted from being a ministry leader to now being a ministry leader and a parent, how did that, how did that shift for you? Yeah, I think early on, you know, we were still youth pastor and when Anna was born and when our son was born, when Anthony was born, but, um, you know, we just involved him in what we were doing. We just took him along. We never really thought twice about, um, you know, them not That's being cool. there. You know, they were obviously in church on the weekends and whatnot, but in both churches, youth ministry was on Friday nights. Just so happened to be the case at both churches that we served at, and and they were there every time we could be there. You know, if if Jen was there, the kids were there, and she was there most almost all the time. Um, so we just brought them alongside, and they watched us do ministry together, and became a part of the fabric of the youth ministry. Kids knew them, other parents got to know them, so that uh, it was important for us through their life, especially early on, to establish those habits and patterns, because we didn't want them to think it was just mom or dad's work or something we did at church, and they only were in kids' environments. Um, but That's to really cool. be part of that as a family. And again, you know, they're probably not going to talk about it until they're into young adulthood and, and have established their own lives, but yeah. um, they'll, they'll be able to re reflect back on that. And I do think it's a large part of even their own personal discipleship journey of being mm -hmm. around other people, watching faith be expressed and lived out uh, within the context of students and teenagers, um, all the camps mm -hmm. that we were a part of, and then now the last number of years, our kids being at camp and... Um, and and so watching that watching that maturation process in their own lives while we were part of the maturation process for this, for for students was a special I think added bonus for us. Yeah. yeah. And now you're kind of at that launching stage for your own kids, you yeah. know, which I'm sure is surreal uh -huh. in a lot yeah. of ways. Yeah. Um so we'll kind of a shift so um told us a little bit about yourself, introduced us, you know, all of the experiences that you had, but now at Kingsway and the role that you have, like, what is your heart for next gen? And like, unpack that a little bit for us. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. I don't think um, next gens, it, it certainly hasn't left me the passion um, for it all these years, um, even in the role that I've had the last 10 plus years in the two roles, I guess I should say, since we've been at Kingsway. Um, and I don't know that it it ever will, you know, um, not from just the perspective as a dad, but um, just as a former youth pastor, and then thinking about it church-wide for um, the families that are part of Kingsway Church, um, for those that have been, for those that will be in the future, and what it means to really um, give the faith away to the next generation, to impart in them, um, you know, the, the, to call out them the giftings, to impart in them what, into them what God has given us as far as what we know um, from the scriptures, uh, the culture of our church, thinking about very intentional and deliberate ways that we create environments for kids and students to experience Jesus and to encounter Him, and then to do life alongside of other kids and students, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think that's really important, really vital. 
Uh, and even back before um, I served in my current role, you know, we were um, we were part of launching Kingsway Leadership School, which is still going today in its in its seventh year. And the heart from the very beginning was, can we build and develop the next generation of servant leaders? You know, how can mm-hmm. we take people who feel called to full time ministry? Um, in vocational ministry or to be entrepreneurs or launch businesses or be in the medical profession or in education, you pick it, Um, but really followers of Jesus that would take that into the marketplace and into the church. Mm. And so we just really tried to keep it really simple. And um, how can we raise up next-gen servant leaders by by forming their head, heart, and hands, you know, and building Mm. out a discipleship component, a practical uh, ministry component as well, where they're getting hands-on experience, as well as delivering to them a quality education through our through our college partnership, and we've just watched students, you know, through the years um, come and go through that program, graduate, watching several of them land ministry jobs now oh, or yeah. be in the workplace, and using the gifts and the skills and really the principles of servant leadership that we were able mm. to give away to them and do ministry with them while they were with us at the school. Um, so that's been a real that's been a real fun part. And I think just from you know my current role again now and not being on the front lines of youth ministry, so to speak, I realize the the power um, in the platform that God gives each one of us, and I and I have a voice to speak into the next generation, which I'm grateful for. And I also feel this responsibility and weight to to uh, own that, to steward it well, and to keep out in front of our church that next gen is not just something we're going to think about then and there, but here and now, um, mm-hmm. and reflecting on where we've been, but continuing to create environments where parents can parent well, where they can be um, partnered up with some others that are in the same season of life, or maybe have some people that can coach them from out ahead um, as well as just kind of keep out in front of us things that even King David cried out, like, Lord, don't forsake me until I declare your power to the next generation. Um, so we have to own that responsibility. Yeah. We can't pass it on to them to get to the generation behind them um, until we model it and exemplify it right in front of them. Mm, that's so good. Oh, I love what you said about that. And I think if every parent could take mm-hmm. that for themselves and... Um, and, ju- you know, in, in our own way, because we're all, right. we're not you, we're not, you know, we all have our parental role that we have when we become parents, we have our ministry calling and the gifts that God has given us, um, but our responsibility is just to, in where we are, use what God has given us for the people he's entrusted yeah. us, yeah. our little ones, yes. or, yeah. you know, however old they are, you right. know, yeah. young uh, teenagers and young adults in mm-hmm. your case now, mm-hmm. um, or a young adult. So... As a parent, you know, if you just kind of reflect back on, you know, being young, because some people, they're yeah. new and yeah. like, ah, and, you know, the journey, you're kind of like, you're not at the end of parenting because we're, you're never done mm-hmm. being a parent, mm-hmm. but um, kind of on that, like, you know, that intense development of a child and growing them into an adult. Anyways, so now that you're kind of on that, that side, like, what were some things like, that helped you? What were supports that the church gave you or that your family or things that you look back on were really important to be help and support you as you wanted to raise your kids to follow Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. I think my mind goes back to family and the context in which um, I grew up in and my wife um, grew up in as well. Um, Christian homes, again, homes and parents that were far from perfect, like like we are, and um, but but striving to really uh, follow Jesus for themselves, both my parents and my mm-hmm. in-laws, and um, reflecting back, and Jen and I have that both have that history of growing up in church. That's where we met years ago, and um, godly parents, right, who love Jesus, and we're trying with the help of the Holy Spirit to raise kids to love Jesus too. And there mm-hmm. was something about the consistency in the home, you know. Um, both of our homes were very real, very upfront. I mean, things were dealt with pretty openly, you know, um, the good and the bad and everything in between. And so I think that was very natural for us to build a house like that as well. So the, and I think mm. every every family has a culture, right? A culture of the home, the feel yeah. of the home, the behavioral patterns. And, um, you know, so so that's marked us. I mean, bo- our, both of our kids have had proximity to all four of their grandparents, which is another mm. gift to us. And so... You know, they, they've learned through the years of like, oh, okay, this is how mom and dad grew up. It makes sense to me now. That's the culture of our <laughs> grandparents' home, which is which is fun and helpful and, and all those things. And then I think one of the other um, huge advantages that we had, and, and, you know, we weren't bright enough to look at look for this ahead of time, but there were people that, 
that were marriage mentors to us, to Jen and I, that we would have never been able to say that maybe even the first couple of years into marriage, let alone when we were dating and engaged, but that were making an investment into us. Again, no promise mm. or guarantee of a return, but they were willing to take a risk and just come alongside of us. And it's usually, it, mm. it felt like it was for us, usually couples that were seven to 10 or 12 years ahead of us. You know, um, when we were newly married, maybe they were married eight to 10 years and had a couple of small kids or whatever it might be. Um, and then through the years, just the friendships God's put in our life to to look to them really as parent mentors, honestly. Mm. And I know we've been talking a lot about that here at Kingsway Church mm. over the last couple of years. They're the things we've recently done with a parent conference last year. And when I think about that, I think, man, you know, we, we look for mentors in every other as- aspect of our lives, right? Whether it's in education, whether it's in our career, if we're starting a business. And as parents, especially as Christian parents, that should be one of the first things, honestly, in my opinion, mm-hmm. that we're looking for. People that are a little bit further down the road than us, you know, who you can see their kids and go, hey, they're turning out pretty well. How do I how do I help my kids get there? And it's really just attaching yourself. So there's a level of vulnerability. There's a level of trust that's got to be built over time. And of course, somebody saying yes to invite you into their life. But I think we often overlook um, just how powerful a mentor when it comes to our parenting can be um, mm. for other kids that other parents that are raising their kids to to love Jesus, to follow Jesus, to be able to speak into our lives. Oh, that's really good. So I like what you said about being vulnerable or or being humble enough to invite someone in because yeah. it, you know, people aren't gonna, you know, well maybe it, you're Italian, mm-hmm. your wife mm-hmm. is yeah. Italian, so maybe the Italians they'll just come up and tell you what to do regardless of if they know yeah. you or not. <laughs> but you know, most people they they if they don't know you, they don't have a relationship, they won't speak. So you have to offer that or ask that. Um, you know, and I I just think here at Kingsway. There's opportunities through life groups. There's opportunity yeah. through attending yeah. each mm-hmm. week to see the people around you, and and almost like you're giving us the um, the freedom or the invitation to hey ask somebody yes. to yep. speak into your life and um, ask someone to be part of your life so that you know we don't have to do it alone. We don't have to figure it out. Obviously, we all have our own kids with their own special selves yep. that like you know uh-huh. that no one else has parented in this age with mm-hmm. those children before. Right. So God has given that to us, yes. but being open and, and inviting someone else into that is is part of the process of growing as a parent and and like you said, investing in being mm-hmm. a parent. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that's what our hope is for this podcast as well, that we can just add encouragement, add inspiration, right. add yeah. some practical yeah. tips to you so that you can feel that way. So really that's our practical mm-hmm. tip today is yeah. like, you know, find find a parent and mentor or just be open to inviting someone else in who um, who's gone before you, who's done some of these things kind of before. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, is there any, like, I, I, when we were talking about your family and your yeah. upbringing, yeah. There, there was like a smile here and there. So, um, which of course, like you love your family, mm-hmm. but the point is, um, is there a story or something that from your, you know, that was impactful or just that you'd like to share from that was maybe you observed your parents parenting as you reflect back or yeah. like for you and your kids that would, I don't know that yeah. you'd like to share. Yeah. There's not one story that comes to mind. I think, uh, you know, um, as I was given thought to this there, it Brooke, there's really, a, it's a culmination of the years of just consistency. I think there was something so I'll speak specifically to my growing up and in my home with my parents, again, not perfect. Didn't get everything right as parents, but did a really good job at being consistent from family dinners to um, my dad ran a business that was right next door to our house. So I grew up in that. So work ethic was on display all the time. I learned early on what it was like to be the first one in and the last one to leave, whether I liked it or not, you know, and looking back, I wouldn't trade that experience for the world. It's taught me so Mm -hmm. many things. It really has impacted my life in so many day-to-day things that when I stop and think about it, it's like, wow, that's, that's absolutely incredible. Um, and most of them things I did begrudgingly, right, as a, as a <laughs> junior high or high school, or right, because who wants to do that at the time? You just want your freedom to go do whatever um, it was I was doing. So uh, I look back on that, and I just I see how um, my mom and dad were a team, you know, and they had their moments like any other set of parents, of course, uh, disagreements, arguments, those kind of things, but um, were, were a united front on raising my sister and I um, to as best they could find Jesus love him, serve him, care for other people. There was a spirit of generosity that filled our home. Um, There were always Mm -hmm. people over, family, extended family, company, guests were over all the time. 
And so um, we learned, even if I was oblivious to it at the time, of how to be hospitable to other people, how to care, how to give other people the right away, how not to be first in line when the food was out, all those kind of things. And, um, you know, it seems almost silly, you know, that there's not a story that comes immediately to mind, but there was just a lifetime of that growing up. And um, you didn't realize how much it's a part of you until you create your own family, your own home. And because Jen came from a very similar background, it just almost immediately felt comfortable in our home that that's what we did. Well, we had people mm-hmm. over and we spent time with others. And and um, and then our kids came along a few years later and just kind of folded right into that, right? And I didn't get to choose whether or not that was going to yeah. happen, right? But um, kind of have acquiesced to that and, and get used to it. But I think just the consistent pattern um, mm-hmm. over, you know, my years growing up through, through graduating college of being in that house, um, where there was just faithful, ongoing. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna love God. We're gonna serve Him. We're not gonna always get it right, um, but we're gonna be available. You know, so that's great. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, yeah. you know, that's the story. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not maybe yeah. a pointed <laughs> right. one, but the story of God's faithfulness in your family mm-hmm. and and the faithfulness of your family, their consistency. You know, that's something that I think we can look at and say, Wow, God could use me like that in my kids' lives, or what could I implement in my life now to be able to be a parent to my kids? You know, in right. the way that God yeah. wants me to do. Yeah. So. Any other, you know, we're talking about next gen parenting, any other things that you wanted to offer as, you know, we're talking? Yeah, I think I think for parents just to just to encourage, you know, our hearts, we talk a lot about inspiring and equipping parents to fulfill the most important role in their kids' lives, right? For for mom and dad and presence of parents and guardians and extended family to be there and make an ongoing investment into into kids and into the next generation. And when I think about that, you know, I, I think a couple of things that kind of come to mind is it's very easy for us as parents, if I can speak uh, specifically as a parent, to um, to parent out of a defensive posture, you know, mm. and the idea of like, well, I'm just going to help my kids avoid sin rather mm. than looking at it a little bit more offensively, like I'm going to actually help them pursue truth, you know, and I find myself yeah. falling into that more than I'd care to admit or probably even realize that it's a lot of react reactionary or responsive Mm. parenting rather than it is proactive. Um, Mm. And it's a challenge. It takes a great deal of effort, right? I mean, a lot of, uh, a lot of parents these days, especially in our church, both, both mom and dad are working, right? So um, it takes that to make ends meet, whatever, whatever that means, right? These days. And so they're coming home, they're tired, whether you're working in the home or outside the home. And um, so the tendency is, especially depending on what time you get home, is to kind of put it in cruise control and let's just make it to bedtime till we get these little guys down for the night. Um, but those yeah. patterns that are established even early on can become a rut that you find yourself in when kids are junior high age and high school and then into college. So I think just being proactive in mm-hmm. the sense of not discrediting the little things, like even the meals. You know, I know for us to sit down even two or three nights a week these days is a task. But even just if it's a 20, 25 minute, half hour conversation, where there's no stuff for their attention, vying for their attention at the table, the phones, the devices, and we can laugh together, you know, recap the day a little bit together, ask hard questions to get all those things that just happen in time where you set aside like, hey, we're going to have some quantity here. And knowing that out of the quantity, the quality time will come because mm-hmm. none of us can force that quality time, right? We don't set a watch and like, all right, five minutes of quality time, go, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. It's the chunks of time yeah. that allow quality time to, to kind of come to the surface. And and so just being mm-hmm. intentional and really deliberate in times like that and not, and again, not discounting the, the tucking them in the bed at night or the dropping them off or picking them up from school school and the little parts where, and I know it's one of your favorite scriptures to talk about in Deuteronomy 6, right, where Moses is instructing the people, hey, talk about God when you're walking along the road and when you tuck them in at night and, you know, mm-hmm. hang them on the doorposts of your home and tie them around your, you know, wrist and your neck and put them on your foreheads. And so all, all that, like finding ways mm-hmm. that every day we can impress the Word of God and His character onto them um, without it being preachy, without it being a lecture in the living room, right? Like, but casually through the course of our life and through our day, um, I think has a long term impact that sometimes we overlook because the day to day just seems like a grind, you know? Yeah. That's good. And and like what I thought of when you were saying that too is like you have to keep it as a priority. Mm-hmm. And that proactivity, yeah. I like that word, that it's challenge because we're proactive with our health. We're proactive mm-hmm. with um, our debt. We're proactive, and maybe we aren't. You know, sometimes you're in right. the throes of parenting and yeah. you're like, I'm just surviving. Like, I'm just in that. But, you know, as followers of Jesus, we want 
we want him to incorporate all areas of our life. And as our relationship with him grows, then that's going to pour out to our kids as well. And so um, obviously that's our prayer and our hope for all of, Mm -hmm. for us as parents, but also, and ministry leaders, but all of the kids and students that were, um, you know, responsible for Mm -hmm. here at Kingsway. And then for the parents too, because that's like you mentioned, even at the beginning, like that's our responsibility. That's our, um, our heart to come alongside the people who have, the most opportunity and the most, um, just like even your personal story, the consistency over time yeah, and yeah, the opportunity yeah. over time to influence. Um, so, you know, when we, as we close our podcast, like, you know, this is our first one, but yeah. what we'd, we'd love for you to pray for Absolutely. our yeah. parents yeah. and, um, and families and that we can, that we can be proactive. We can mm-hmm. do what God is calling us to do and fulfill that role in mm-hmm. their lives. Yeah. So would you pray for Absolutely. us? Absolutely. Absolutely. Father, we're so grateful um, for the call that you give to us, especially for uh, parents that are tuning in, God, and for those that have influence in the next generation, aunts, uncles, grandparents, coaches, teachers, uh, leaders at church, whatever it might be. And, and Father, I pray that you would continue to just strengthen us um, by your Holy Spirit. Uh, to impart your wisdom and your truth to the next generation. And and Lord, as they continue to learn about you and seek to follow you and use the gifts that you've put inside of each one of them, uh, would you use us as parents and as leaders in their lives to come alongside of them and to foster environments and conversations that'll pull out the very best that you put inside of them out, God? And, and, and as that happens, I pray that, Lord, we wouldn't talk about the next generation only in the sense of like 20 or 30 years from now, but to recognize that the gifts that you've given to students and children, junior hires, elementary age kids, preschoolers, high schoolers, college age kids right now, God, those gifts are for the church and for the body and for the world, even in this moment. And so, um, Lord, as we as we seek to honor you and steward their lives and our influence in them as best we can, uh, we just trust it'll go a long way. And, and just like King David, we'll be able to say we were able to declare to the next generation your great power and your might. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.